Hello, Mary Meet. So, um, I am at Christmas vacation at my mother's place. That's why you haven't gotten any videos lately. But since my mother is out visiting some friends, I thought I would seize this opportunity to make a video. You see, my mother is very fond of that TV over there. And is very fond of having it going all day. So it's a little bit hard to find a time to actually make a video. Anyway, I want to review a book. The book I want to review is The Masterworks of Chaos Magic by Adam uh, Blackporn. This is published by Gallery of Magic, which has several excellent titles. And it's not a very big book. It will not take you a lot of hours to read through this, but I find it to be quite useful. So let's have a look at the contents. We have Make Magic Happen, which is sort of an introduction. And the first step, which basically considers what should you do to get into magic. Instant Alchemy. Uh, if I don't believe... Uh, yeah, I think that's the one about the uh, sigils, I think. I, it's, uh, I'm not completely sure what each of these chapters contain, because I just read them and I often don't notice what uh, each chapter says. So yeah, Instant Alchemy is actually about emotional magic. That is a topic throughout this book. Then you have The Core of Desire, which is an awesome chapter, in which basically, because this book uh, uses emotions as the fuel for magic. And it can be a great aid to those of us who are not necessarily that good at visualization. Because very often in magic you are to visualize what you are trying to achieve. So let's say I want to get um, a, a sum of money. You are to visualize getting that money and... Sometimes that can be hard to do, but here you're rather trying to focus on the emotions. You try to invoke the emotions of, hey, I've gotten all this money. And at least I find it easier to bring up those emotions rather than vi keeping a continuous visualization through a working. And then we have the fire of noses, which talks about the various types of noses that you can use. Uh, and it do, and I excuse my nails, it do recommend uh, the use of sex magic and orgasm as the easiest way to attain noses, but there are other ways too. Uh, magical Chaos Energy, which discusses energy work. And influence Magic, which discusses magic's effect on others. And... Um, how you may affect others, and how others affect you in turn. Uh, thoughts, forms, and other people. I actually like this chapter a lot, because there's a lot of information out there on servitors. How to create servitors, how to maintain servitors, and it is a very useful craft. But this basically talks about thought forms, which, and how to use uh, thought forms um, with magic. And I really, really like that, um, because uh, it's a bit of an untapped potential. Uh, a thought form is not necessarily as rigid as a servitor, and we sort of always create them around ourselves. And for a lot of people, it can be a lot easier. Basically, thought forms are a lot more of faking it till you make it. Basically, it's like creating an imaginary friend, and you talk to it as if it's real. And then eventually it will get a real spiritual presence. Actually, there was, and I wish I remembered which university it was, but it was one university studying, where there was a group studying the paranormal, and I decided to make a ghost. So they just made up stories about this ghost, they imagined hearing the ghost, they basically treated it as it was real, and then eventually it was. They started having paranormal experiences with it. 
And this is basically how to create those thought forms and then using those for magic. Uh, and then we have upside down sex magic, which is a pretty bit of a fun chapter. Uh, contacting spirits, which talks about spirit magic from this person's perspective. Uh, then you have uh, Olympic chaos magic, which is actually a little grimoire in all of itself with a group of spirits that you can contact and what they can be contacted with. And a simplified way to do it. I actually love the ritual in this. I adore the ritual in here that you find in here because it's it sort of have the flair of the spiritual summonings that you find in the old grimoires but it's simple it's easy it's been simplified all the woof woof has been taken out so it, you will not be using days to prepare and hours in ritual no no it's it's a simple practical rite that still have the same flair it this book is worth it just for that ritual, just for this little mini grimoire section. It is worth the cost. Uh, then you are making new magic, which is some advice on how to make your own systems. Uh, then you have the magic of pure invention, uh, which uh, speaks about basically uh, completely making up something from scratch instead of using bits of another system like he has done with this uh, spirit magic system that's in here, which is clearly taken from a source, then you have just making something up, and then you have the big picture which basically talks about um, magic as a thing. And yeah, I really, really like this book. Uh, there are two very important practical things here. One is a system for creating sigils that I haven't seen anywhere else, which uses emotions rather than words. I love this sigil working system instead of basically, you know, the regular way where you use when you make sigils. You write up a sentence, for example, I have a new car. Uh, but instead of doing that, and then you basically uh, take away uh, letters that repeat and so on and so forth, and you put the letters on top of one another and you create a symbol from it and you at fire that off and you try to forget about it and that's your magic working. Okay, here instead, in, instead of working with letters, you sit and you feel the emotions of, oh, uh, how will it feel like when I get a new car? Uh, or other like his presence in books, how did it feel like when I got this new car? Basically seeing it as something that happened in the past that has already happened. And you, while you're filling yourself with those emotions, you sit with a pen on a piece of paper and you doodle. It's like a semi-automatic um, semi writing. And then you just tidy that up and make a sexual out of it and same thing. That's an awesome uh, way to do it. I also really love the, the little grimoire that's in here. So, yeah. Uh, what I would recommend this book for is those that might find Chaos Magic to be confusing. Because this book basically doesn't have theory. For a lot of people, they are interested in Chaos Magic, but they just can't wrap their head around the paradigms and ideas and the, oh, but, but our spirit is real, yeah, well, if you believe in them. But this doesn't contain any of that. It contains the, the elements of Chaos Magic, the freedom of Chaos Magic, but it doesn't have all the theory. And as such, I think this can be a great little book to get your hands on, if you're interested in that freedom of magic to work with and at the same time at the same time uh, don't want all of the theory it's a very practical book i also like this author it's a very pleasant way of writing because there's a lot of things that he says that i don't necessarily agree with um for example, he is against, uh, not for anybody else, but for himself, the use of uh, fiction, of basically using a fictional character uh, for a summoning 
or a fictional magic system, because it feels that that will just fill your mind with the idea that this is fiction, and it will be much harder to get your magic to work. I don't feel it the same way. I have had great results using elements from fiction, and I believe that if whatever something is made to be real or made to be fiction doesn't really matter. When we get into the astral plane of things, it's all the same thing. But even when he writes about his own opinions, he doesn't sort of force it down your throat. He says, this is my experience, this is my opinion, and he leaves it at that. And that is a very pleasant way to write. So, yeah, I like this book. Um, um, basically, my only possible complaint is that, as you can see here, the letters are very, very big. So it literally only takes you a couple of hours of reading that book. For the price, I would, it's not extremely expensive, but even so, for the price, I would have wanted a bit more material. But that is really the only complaint I can think of. I don't, of course, agree with everything this author is saying. I don't think I have one single book in my collection where I agree with everything an author is saying. It's a very good and useful book that gives you two magical techniques that are awesome and simple and very practical. So I really recommend this book. I'll give it 9 out of 10. And that is my review of The Masterworks of Chaos Magic by Adam Blackthorne. And yeah, uh, if I don't have a chance to make another video before uh, before uh, New Year's Eve, uh, have a great New Year, everywhere, everyone. And um, have a great day. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And blessed be.